Well, thank you very much, everybody, and it's an honor to be with you. And I think they are starting to engage because there's a lot of pressure put on them right now. Uh, people want the wall, they want security. So I just have to say, uh, great to be with you today. So many distinguished state and local leaders, grassroots activists, leaders in the faith community and members of law enforcement. The first duty of government is to protect the nation and its borders. Without secure borders, the nation is left vulnerable, unprotected, defenseless, and totally exposed. We proudly welcome those who follow the rules, uphold our values, and contribute to American society. What we cannot have is a mass, uncontrolled, illegal migration that threatens public safety, drains public resources, hurts United States workers, and claims thousands of innocent lives. You see in Honduras right now, they're setting up another caravan it's already broken through, and I guess they're marching up along Mexico, and we're prepared for it. But if we had walls, we'd be fully prepared with a much smaller staff and a lot less danger for both them and us. If they knew we had the wall, as we're talking about, or a steel barrier, which frankly is stronger than a wall, and you can see through it, which is a big advantage, they wouldn't need to be marching up. They wouldn't have to bother because they know they wouldn't get through. But we've been stopping them, and it's been a lot of hard work and a lot of dangerous work. We're in the midst of grave humanitarian and security crises on our southern border. For the last three months, Custom and Border agents, who are terrific, by the way, have apprehended an average of 2,000 illegal and unauthorized migrants a day. One in three women are sexually assaulted on the journey north. Last month alone, 20,000 migrant children were illegally brought across our border. Women and children are the worst abused of all under what's happening. And it's been this way for many years. This should have been done many presidents ago. We're doing things that other presidents were unable to do. Drugs are pouring across the border. Heroin alone kills 300 Americans a week, 90% of which Floods across our southern border in 2017, drugs killed over seven, it's hard to believe when you look at these numbers, I'm looking down a fact sheet, 70,000 Americans. And I hear that's really a very low number by comparison to what the real numbers are. But 70,000 people and imposed costs on our society in excess of $700 billion. In the last two years, ICE officers arrested 266,000 aliens with criminal records, including those charged or convicted of 100,000 assaults, 30,000 sex crimes, and 4,000 homicide and violent killings. Hard to believe. Illegal immigration places enormous burdens on public schools, local hospitals, and community resources, as you know. Illegal immigration is also deeply unfair to American workers, hitting African Americans and Hispanic American workers particularly hard. They lose their jobs, they don't get jobs. A lot of it has to do with the subject we're talking about. Last week I traveled to McAllen, Texas to tour the border and meet with the heroes of ICE and Border Patrol. These patriots made clear what they need from Congress. They explained that there's no substitute for a wall or a very powerful, strong physical barrier. What is going on today is absolutely ridiculous, unfair, and we will be so strong in getting what we need. That's why we've asked Congress to fund a barrier or wall. This barrier will stop illegal activity while directing lawful trade, travel, and commerce to our ports of entry. It will work, absolutely work. And when I say work, probably much more than 90% of the time, we're gonna have numbers that are incredible. You see what happens with some places where they put it up, they go from totally unsafe to totally safe. I believe it's El Paso. Texas, where they put it up, it went from one of the most unsafe cities in the country to one of the safest cities in the country as soon as the wall was put up. And 
it's like that. That's the way it is, common sense. And they know it. The Democrats know it. They fight for political reasons. They don't fight for any other reason. They have, and that's why, if you look at the recent polls, uh, the whole concept of a border wall or barrier is going way up because people are now learning about it, learning about the problem, learning about the crime and death that pours through. As part of our border security plan, we've also asked Congress to approve cutting-edge technology to detect drugs and contraband, to fund more agents, officers, beds, and humanitarian assistance, and to close disastrous immigration loopholes. Just last week, a brutal stabbing in Long Island was carried out by members of MS-13 gangs who took advantage of loopholes for unaccompanied alien minors. The government remains shut down for one reason and one reason only. Democrats will not fund something that they know is absolutely necessary, border security. They know it's necessary. They're smart people. They know it has to happen. But they just want to do well in 2020. It's about obstruction. They're being held hostage when you say that we are, everybody is, the whole country, by radical far-left open borders, fringe people within the Democrat Party. And I think it's changing fast. I think opinions are changing fast. And even some of them are coming around because they see it's a debate that they can't win. It's common sense. I'm asking everyone listening today to organize your fellow citizens to call Democrat lawmakers and ask them to support legislation to secure the border stop illegal immigration and reopen our government. And we really appreciate your incredible support. Uh, it is absolutely powerful. I mean, there's been no break. There's been no people say, oh, gee, we have to, we have to try and make a deal. In fact, if anything, people are very impressed with how well government is working with the circumstances that we're under. And we're working very hard to make sure that happens. In another administration, they did just the opposite. They wanted people to be uncomfortable. Well, I don't believe that. I don't believe in it. And we are doing a really great job. Our secretaries, the people that work uh, for our country are doing a really good job. And people are actually amazed that with this many people, that government is really working so well. So we're very proud of that. But we have to have the security of a border wall. Without that, all the drones, all the technology, everything that we're talking about is meaningless. They're just toys. They need the wall in order to be important, in order to be useful. So now I'd like to call on Sheriff Leon Wilmot from Yuma County, Arizona, great place, for a question. Sheriff? Mr. President, First and foremost, I want to thank you for your support to the men and women in law enforcement throughout this country and for placing the safety and security of our citizens of the United States as a priority. I want to tell you the level of communication and collaboration from your office and the Secretary of Homeland Security and her staff have been very much appreciated with the sheriffs, and we truly value the Secretary Nielsen's steadfast dedication to ensuring the safety and security of our country. As a sheriff of Yuma County, I know firsthand that a barrier, fence, or wall, whatever one wants to call it, along with associated tactical infrastructure tailored to our geographic area works. In Yuma, it had a minimum of a 91% reduction of ancillary crimes just in our community alone. With the situation that our federal law enforcement partners and law enforcement throughout the country is experiencing with the cartels exploiting our weaknesses on our border, in immigration laws along our border, we are now at a critical juncture, and our federal partners are being overwhelmed. Yuma sector yesterday had the worst incursion of illegal entries along the southwest border with over 500 illegally entering in our county. With Congress making this, uh, without Congress making this a priority, it, it is only exacerbating the situation we are facing and is going to cause fiscal constraints to local communities throughout the United States that are going to be impacted by this situation. My question, Mr. President, is as a local, state, or county elected official, what is it we can do to help you in dealing with this crisis 
to bring law and order back to our border, and most importantly, to our country. Well, Sheriff, thank you very much. And you did have a really bad day yesterday, and as I understand it, we caught them all. But it's tough. Yes, we did. If we didn't have to catch any. If we had a barrier up, we wouldn't have had to catch any if we had a wall. So uh, that's, you know, an amazing, amazing tribute to all of the law enforcement, including Border Patrol, but all law enforcement. You helped, everybody helped. Can you imagine they caught them all? But what, a, what an amount of work that is to do, to go running around catching people that just walk in. So I'll tell you what you can do, Sheriff, is unity. We need unity. We're going to stay out for a long time if we have to. We'll be out for a long time. Uh, again, government's working well, and we appreciate it. We really appreciate the people that have, you know, sacrificed so much, and they're not being paid right now because of the Democrats. What we need is unity, and that's what we have. I have had nobody call up and say, gee, let's go back, because this is a, this is a, a thing that we need more important than any. We need security and safety and national security. As you know, we took in people from Pakistan. We took in people from parts of the world that you wouldn't believe. This could be a very tough group. And it is a very tough group coming in. And we're capturing them for the most part. But what we need more than anything else, Sheriff, is stay together, be unified. We're not going back until we get what we have to get. And we're not going back. Now, maybe... Uh, It'll be a hundred to nothing someday in Congress, and I guess I'll just sort of sit back and say, well, they're going to get it. But I don't think so. And I think the Republican Senate and the Republican House, members of whom I just left, are totally united for the sake of safety for our nation. And really, you have to remember this. This is a major humanitarian crisis. It is a major security crisis. It's never going to get better. It's only going to get worse because of the fact that our country is doing well and people want to pour into our country. This has very little to do with fear. This has to do with economic. And people are coming up, and in many cases, they're not working. They're coming up to enjoy the fruits of a system that took a long time to build, that will collapse under the weight of the millions of people that want to pour in. And uh, what we have to do, Sheriff, you know what's going on. We have a lot of companies moving back into the United States. We need people. And so we want people to come in, but they have to come in legally through a system. And we like merit-based people that are going to go and help us. And so if we just stick together, we're going to win because we're not going back until it's until the Democrats do what they know they have to do. And, Sheriff, I appreciate it. you have done a fantastic job. And I know you worked very hard yesterday in particular. That was a wild one. But uh, soon you won't have to work so hard because we'll get this up. We'll get it up fast, and it'll be like a different day. So I want to thank you, Sheriff, and thank you, everybody. Stay together. We're going to win. We're not going back until it's over. We're going to build this wall. It's going to happen. I've been promising. It has nothing to do with the campaign promise. It has to do with the fact that we need this for our country. Thank you all very much. Thank you.